Tank Town was developed about 15 years ago to help people put in rainwater collection systems to have a better quality of life with their water. The options out here in the hill country are pretty bleak. It's either a well, city water, which isn't out here, or rainwater. When I moved out here, I drilled a well and found that my hair felt like, felt like a fright wig and my jeans stood up like cardboard and I couldn't get the soap out of my hair. The water smelled like sulfur and I about threw up in the shower and decided that this wasn't for me. So I searched around and uh, ran into this guy named Mike McKelvin, who started collecting rainwater out here in 1984. I searched around and found that uh, fiberglass tanks were the best things to store them in. I bought one and then built my system, not really knowing what to do. I didn't know really anything about plumbing, and, which is all this is, is plumbing. My neighbor came by and said, why are your dishes so shiny? And did you just buy those dishes? And I said, no, those are our same old dishes. Well, I want that. I know my wife does too. So I called up the tank guy and I said, I have a friend that wants to buy a tank. And they said, okay. And then another neighbor came by and he bought a tank. Then another neighbor bought a tank. And Tank Town was born now, right at my house. We had put in 200 systems and we started selling tanks all over the country. We sent one to upstate New York and New Mexico and Colorado and it's just all over this country really. After living with the well water for a few years and meeting Richard Heineken, he convinced me that rainwater was the only way to go. These are 10,000 gallon nominal tanks. If we can get one inch of rain a month we can keep them full. We're very fortunate. We get 3,000 gallons of water for every inch of rain. It's the same equipment that you would use for a water well. It's not rocket science. It's pretty basic stuff. There's nothing like rainwater. I tell you, once you use rainwater, even compared to Austin city water, uh, you won't want to use anything else. That's just regular tap water. It looks really good when it came out, right? But after it sits, that all the de all this debris that's in surface water, all water has this in it. And then this has gone through the filter systems. It's gone through all their purification. It's, a, it's as good as they could get, and it's and it was certified. It's okay by the government to get, let people drink this. This is rainwater bottled in 2004. Well, it is basically just a drop of water. It tends to coalesce around small dust particles in the atmosphere and, and grow until it rains out. And it'll have dissolved constituents. There are minute aerosol particles. An aerosol is a very tiny drop or a very tiny dust particle that is just kept in the air because they're so light they don't settle down. And so the rain actually collects this material in its droplets. We took the little raindrop out using reverse osmosis, the little particle around the raindrop. We removed that. Well, they didn't. <laughs> One hot day, I was leaving work after I ran out of water to go home to get a new bottle of water. And I thought, well, hell, I should bottle this stuff. And now we have, we have another avenue for Tank Town. We've bottled water, we help people collect water. So we're just all about rainwater. You can't get better water. Water is in its purest form before it hits the ground. And that just makes a huge difference. And some people say that you've got to have, when you drink water, it's got to have stuff in it because you need the minerals. Well, that is so wrong. You should drink water for what's not in it. All the water from our aquifers, like the Edwards Aquifer, and indeed from the Colorado River, is rainwater. It's just had a longer time to flow through the soil, dissolve more mineral constituents, and so it'd be more saline. And if you go to some places where the water is very old, it's, or um, it's going through a certain type of rock, like it's going through rock salt, it becomes very salty and too salty to drink by our, our health standards that we have set. 
there's so little fresh water on this planet. Since the Colorado River doesn't flow to the ocean or the Gulf of Mexico anymore around here, we're not getting any more diluted water. And that's what's happening. We're getting big dead zones in the ocean because of no fresh water. We're too many people get too much pollution. We're sucking the water out of, out of the aquifers faster than it can recharge. So rainwater in the future will be the only bottled water you can get. It's a resource. It's, well, basically free. You have to get a collection service, a system for it, but it's something we should be using. And I think we're gonna see more of that in the future. If you tell somebody it's rainwater, they say, yeah, right, you know. They don't really believe it because they, they hear the stories how most of the bottled water is just tap water that somebody put in a bottle and put a name on it. Richard's is pure rainwater and it's highly treated and purified. I mean, rainwater doesn't need purifying, but he, he purifies it to the end. Everybody's interested in this rainwater now because it's, they know it's so precious. They're just starting to think about it, you know? With rainwater, it's, 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 totally, you know, it's just totally different. I can't believe I'm the first person to do this. It's crazy. Fish they are becoming dead. The ocean breeze brings the smell of progress and disease. As I walk along the shore, things aren't like they were before.